So the broader approach or the broader perspective that I think is typical to geography helped me understand that the outcome of the negotiation is not purely determined by the national agendas, but also by social factors, by how communication is structured and organized inside and outside the negotiations. Since my background is in the field of literary studies, language is of course an important aspect for me to uh, look at, and I paid a lot of attention to how language was used in order to transmit information to the audience, and I appreciated that many groups were still very passionate about their cause. Their language was full of urgency, but also hope, and I personally think that was very important for me to hear amidst the negotiations. I'm a researcher um, studying how people deal with complex information, and especially stakeholders in uh, conservation challenges. Um, and I found it very striking at the COP that there was very little attention to information processing. I really liked that one part of the venue in which they showed more creative approaches to the climate crisis. It was called the Green Zone, and the atmosphere was very different. They displayed um, art, sculptures, picture collections, quite a nice way to get a break from all of the serious input that came from the negotiations and the talks, while still being reminded of the larger issue. One key moment for me definitely happened in this place that was called Co-Creative Communication and Reflection Space. And there they offered basically workshops on communication. How do we communicate and interact with each other in this crazy international super busy setting? Those were actually the only places where people would actually take the time and listen to each other. What I also liked at the COP was that they tried to add tactile activities to teach about topics that might be a bit harder to grasp. One example would be the air pollution hubs. Those look like big bubbles filled with fog. You could actually feel um, the air pollution, and in some of these bubbles, you could barely breathe. Um, there seems to be an implicit assumption that uh, the decision makers will just absorb any kind of information that you give them. And of course, we've known for a very long time that this is not the case. People select information, they interpret information. So it can be very dangerous to neglect um, the fact that policymakers and climate change decision makers are also subject to using these heuristics and biases when they are presented this information, for example, in the IPCC reports or at the presentations at the COP. My concern for the COP26 would be that then in 2021, it's still perceived as the main approach to a solution to the climate crisis. I think it is not. The COP26 isn't where the work is supposed to start, but it is today that we need to lay the groundwork um, for the negotiations happening at the COP26. I really hope that for the next COP that there will be more consideration in terms of the research that's being done and uh, the way that information is presented. And of course, I hope that the outcomes of COP26 will be more productive. <laughs>